Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm playing another game and I've just woken up on a nice Saturday morning and I've got Mr. Moskalenko. Now, Moskalenko has written two fantastic books. One on the Dutch, my favourite opening, and one on the French, another one of my favourite openings. So, let's see how my Dutch gets on against other Mr. Dutch himself, Mr. Moskalenko. And, well, my opponent has gone for a sensible setup here with e4 so this is something which is not so main line and i have to say if you haven't seen moskalenko's books he's got one book i think it's called uh die die well, God, i can't remember it now diamond dutch i think that might be the one which is really a fantastic book and his other um his other sorry i'm just trying to think as well while i'm rambling his other book um on the french is something like the fabulous french i believe something along those lines and i have to say both of these books really worth getting i've got both of them and they are some of the best books so i'm really help plugging him after all this plugging i should i should actually now completely stuff him in the game because you know i am um, to teach him a lesson but he's picked a very good system here this is a system that Ivan Sokolov, a very good player, played against me the white pieces and defeated me with. And it's a very solid setup. White's got a nice control of the central squares. I've gone for a knight to h5 move to try to get queen to h4 checked, to try to, you know, generate some play. I'm going to double his pawns where I get a chance um, and simply castle here. And now I'm going to try a strategy with maybe d6 and e5. This looks like a very sensible way to play. And it's probably, you know, roughly equal this type of position. Uh, maybe I even go c5 here. I don't know. This is the other way I can play. Quite a positional way to play, like a Nimzo Indian trying to play against his double c pawns. If you know the Nimzo Indian opening, this certainly has uh, some similarities. Okay, so now I'm very tempted to throw my queen into h4. Give me a chance to go forwards and I will. So he has the two bishops. I have the strategic advantage of playing against his double c pawns. I just checked this is actually the Moskalenko, I think it is. It must be GM Moskalenko. Now, let's develop my last piece. This can't be a bad move. And here, quite like my position, I can even consider this typical rook swing now. Rook f6, get it across to g6 and just try to checkmate him. So that's one idea. I mean, c5 I like as a good way to block up the queen side. My opponent obviously trying to get the queens off, which I, I think I want to keep the queens on the board here, preferably. So, you know, let's keep them, let's keep the queens on because I maybe want to try to attack the guy later on. I don't really like swapping off queens unless I have to. You know, I'm such a patser, I need to rely on tricks with my queen later in the game. I mean, don't put me in an endgame position. That's that's something I rarely reach in my games. Not such a bad endgame player, but, you know, I, I, I'm i I'm no Keith Arkell, the famous endgame player from England, or Ulf Anderson, um, and I prefer to go for checkmate. But I think I'm very happy in my position, because when you play the Dutch defence, your main break is often e5, and... My position is quite ready to play that. So it's an interesting move for my opponent now. He's trying to force me into taking when he can take with his pawn. And uh, that would be a good pawn structure for him. So I'm simply going to move my knight back now and keep the idea of e5 lurking in the position. If I can play this move e5, this is the Dutch move. I force his knight back and I try to come through the centre. Um, so that's my idea and uh, I'm still waking up from you know sat Saturday morning you gotta have a get your glass of water in haven't you so uh, this is the way to go but okay interesting position I, I like my position so my opponent now puts his queen on a better square well I'm gonna go I'm gonna go e5 anyway I don't see any reason why I should not play this move and this is what I expected he'd play now if I win a pawn on d5, he wins a pawn here. And I, I, I don't really want to allow this. I wonder if I should take my knight or my bishop. If I take my bishop, I can go e4, you see. But then his bishop comes into c6. I think I'll take my knight. I quite like keeping my bishop. And I'm really wondering now if I can sack a pawn uh, with e4 and get some kind of 
generate some kind of attack here. Looks very tempting to me, this move. Uh, okay, I'm going to play it. I don't know if it's the best move, because I think my position was fine anyway. But my idea is he's a little bit behind in development. And maybe this wasn't the best idea. Maybe getting a little bit carried away. But I was hoping here I had knight to f6. And now maybe I had some other move, but knight to f6. Win my pawn back on d5 but I have to be very careful because this center is also very strong so not sure if I made the right decision there and my opponent my very strong opponent has done a great job of rearranging his pawns well obviously I can't let him go e4 I've got to try winning one pawn back here and I kind of think this is a very balanced position still um but, okay, well, knight to f6 seems like a good, sensible move. I've got ideas of queen f6 and trying to checkmate. Uh, but then he'd move his bishop. This gets very tactical then. Um, knight to f6 looks simple and good. So I'm just going to, you know, try to save a bit of time and play the simple option. Because I want to force this pawn to... Well, how does he guard the pawn for a start? If I win this pawn, I'm a pawn up. So, for a change, the Dutch has gone well. Uh, doesn't often happen that way in these games. My, if you can see from my library of games that my uh, last opponent in the Dutch played a pretty much perfect game. He played an exceptional game against me and won. Well, near perfection. So can I go queen e4 and aim for a queen exchange or do I just put my queen on d6? Okay, I'm a pawn up, but anything can happen. It's blitz after all. And I want to try to get my knight to d5. I think my knight will also be better than his bishop. And my opponent understands this, obviously, being a strong player he is. So he swaps it off. Now, do I take with a rook? Probably more sensible. Piece is nicely centralized. It's a pawn. Um, so, again, I'm quite happy the way it's gone. Let's avoid, I was going to say, any back rankers there. Can I play something like a little bit more tactical? Um, I don't really need to, do I? Let's, let's play c6, because I didn't want to allow him to play d5 there. And if he checks me, I can put my queen on d5. Got to be a little bit careful of my time. So, let's see. I mean, this is this is going okay so far, this game. I mean, it's rarely that a game goes okay for me, as you've probably seen by my number of other games. Okay, well, let, let's... Do I go g6, or do I go... Which pawn do I move? I don't know. I don't know which is best here. I go, I'll go h6 and just put, you know, a very useful move to play. And as I would say in Russia, it's just a, a matter of technique here. But I don't have any of that, so it's probably going to be a very big struggle. Um, okay, so my opponent trying to hit out against a7. Okay, well, let's, let's just... Oh, that's really stupid of me, isn't it? I've allowed him to check and take on b6. Like an idiot, I allow him right back in the game. Like I said, it's just a matter of technique. And I have shown that I don't have any technique. Uh, well, luckily for me, I might be winning the pawn on a2. And I shouldn't be worse here. Obviously, I'm still a pawn up. And I have this extra a pawn. It might just be on the clock this game. Got to get my quick hand going, you know like uh, Clint Eastwood get ready for the quick draw okay um right now let's put my king somewhere safer um and I want to get my queen on the diagonal b1 to h7 to stop any checks and push my a pawn this would be a technical way to play um my opponent okay let's just centralize pieces always a good idea if in doubt centralize I'm happy to try an ending. It might be drawn, but I'm happy to play because I'm up on time and it means I play with no risk. So my opponent clearly doesn't want to play into that. And now, again, offering an ending. When you material up, you can often go for an ending. And well, if I go there, he might be able to win a pawn in the ending and then technically a bit difficult. Let, let's, let's try the ending anyway because we're both quite short of time. Uh, the problem here is that this ending... This ending is, 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 I don't know if it's win, winner or loss, or well, not a loss, but a winner or draw. Um, I mentioned my endings earlier. I mean, the whole point of this is 
I'm going to try to get my king around. God, you can see you can see why I don't like going into endings. I'm flaffing about like a idiot here. And uh, okay, but I mean my time's very good. I mean I want to go king b6 and slowly push my pawn in. Okay, I, I managed to win on time there, which uh, which is nice because like I said, Moskalenko. Um, you can go I, I suggest you Google his um, um, books, and he's written two fantastic books: The Diamond Dutch, which is a book I use myself to study the Dutch defence with, and also I think The Fabulous French One and Two. And he's an expert in the two of my favourite openings: the Dutch defence and the French defence. And he's a great writer, really, really witty writer. So that was interesting that I actually managed to get a Dutch opening against one of the Dutch experts in the world proving yet again that the Dutch can be a good opening. So I'm happy with that after my losses in the past that I can actually um, still play the Dutch. That's uh, relieving. Um, I mean, analysis. I still haven't worked out how to get the board up. Is there a chess? Okay, let's see if I can. I'll, I'll mess about with um, some things here. Add examiner. How about that? No, we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to see if I can... I should have obviously annotate position no i just want to look at the game now thank you very much i'm a computer phobe um so i thought it was, someone said click the chessboard symbol and this should do it so can i move the pieces now oh maybe i can can i actually play other moves though no i can't well let's have a brief overview of the game we don't know to, need to go too much in depth in it so with the move e6 if my opponent plays e4 i get a french if he plays c4, as he did in the game, then I get my Dutch defence. And my opponent played a system which is not one of the main lines, but I think a very good system. And if you're looking for a good way to play against the Dutch, then the way my opponent played here is quite sensible. g3 and bishop g2 is the normal way, but this way he played, he puts his pawns on these squares, and they control a lot of squares. f3 pawn controls this e4 outpost which is very important in the dutch and my opponent put his bishop on d3 as knight on e2 so i need to develop my pieces to the best square so i, I tried this knight to h5 move because in some cases i have queen h4 check which is very disruptive from my opponent um and now i just develop my pieces and here i get a chance to double his pawns on c3 and i think this is a good decision to make because now i always have some targets to attack later on Probably a roughly equal position. Um, and now d6. And in the classical Dutch, your main break is e5. And when I finish developing my pieces, as you'll see in the game, I get e5 in. So it actually works pretty pretty well in the game for a change. So knight g3, queen h4. Happy to get my queen near as king. Castles, knight d7. Always get your pieces developed before you formulate a proper plan. Maybe my opponent sh could, could try e4 here at some point. This might have been uh, a much more, as the computer actually recommends, a much more sensible move to play. Um, okay, knight to e2. And I could swap the queens off here because then I, and in actual fact, it's a matter of taste. I could then play against his, you know, weaknesses, his poor weaknesses. But it also makes perfect sense to try to checkmate the guy and keep the queens on the board. And knight to f4, clever move. If I take his knight off, he gets a half open e file, and it'll be very hard for me to play my Dutch move e5. So that's why I move my knight back. And now I get e5 in, knight d5. And here, I mean, this is where I like to show you the variation. I, I will look at more how I'm supposed to do this. I don't know, in um, I've got blitz in, so I don't know exactly how. I can do this. Let's see. Annotate, copy from game, clear board. I, I don't know. Okay, I'll give up on this for now. So here I was thinking about taking the bishop and going e4. But then you can see my light squares around my queen side are quite weak if I give up this bishop. So it made more positional sense to take the knight because then my bishop on b7 can still guard the light squares. And here e4 is actually the computer's first choice, surprisingly enough. And one of the reasons I thought this might work is because his bishops on c1, his rooks here, and I've got nice open lines. So actually, the computer gives this as a good line, which is quite surprising um, that I'm actually playing 
OK moves. That all surprises me when I play OK moves. Uh, bishop to e4, and again, knight to f6, the best move. Surprises me yet again. And the danger he has here is because his central pawns are on dark squares, when the bishops are exchanged, positionally speaking, if he can't get his centre moving, he has a very, very bad bishop on c1. And if I go knight to f6 to e4, I get this typical good knight versus bad bishop position. So imagine moving the knight on d5 to e4 here. That would give me a very pleasant you know, advantage of my good knight dominating his bad bishop. It's a bad bishop because his bishop is on the same colour squares as his pawn. So that's why, understandably, my opponent tries to go forwards with e4. But that does lose a pawn, and really... The rest, as I say, is a matter of technique, which I obviously managed to mess up. Let's just go to the final position and try to work out what uh, the result should be here. Um, I Honestly, I expect this is a draw. I mean, I, I can try to push my C pawn and my king up the board, but there's so little material left. I think with correct defensive play, my opponent can draw this. But I think I'm totally in the right to play on because I'm a pawn up and... It has great winning chances. I'd play on this position against anyone in the world with any time in the world because I've got an outside pass pawn. But, you know, in endings, the least material there is on the board, the more likely it is to draw. And to be honest, don't ask me anything about openings because I wasn't brought up in Russia. I was brought up in the streets of London. No, I wasn't really. I was actually brought up in Farnham. But um, I don't know much about um, endings at all. So I really don't know if it's a draw or win. We'll leave that to someone else to decide. Maybe you can give me your opinions, what you think. Is this position winning or is it a draw? I think it's probably a draw, but I don't know. Anyway, it was a nice honour to play Moskalenko there and I um, managed just about to get the better of him, but, you know, um, he's a great player. So on to another video.